November 13th, the House Intelligence Committee began their first public hearings of the impeachment inquiry into President Donald Trump. Over the course of the next few weeks, important witnesses shared their accounts of the Trump administration's pressure campaign against Ukraine and the president's July 25th phone call with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. The public hearings began on November 13th with testimony from William Taylor, the United States ambassador to Ukraine. Taylor testified that one of his staff members, David Holmes, overheard European Union Ambassador Gordon Sondland having a phone conversation with President Trump, in which the two discussed, quote, the investigations, unquote, likely referring to the investigations President Trump requested that Ukraine open into Joe and Hunter Biden. When Holmes asked Sondland what President Trump thought about Ukraine, Sondland, a high-ranking official who was close to the president, allegedly responded that President Trump cares more about investigations into the Bidens than helping Ukraine. Next came Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman on November 19th. Vindman is a military officer who received a Purple Heart Medal after being wounded by a roadside bomb during his service in Iraq. He testified that he knew no one at the State Department, the Pentagon, or the National Security Council who thought it was a good idea to hold up the military aid to Ukraine. Vindman also said that he was concerned about the outsized influence of the president's personal lawyer, Rudolf Giuliani, on the U.S.'s Ukraine policy, since Giuliani holds no official government position. The highlight of the hearing, however, came when Vindman addressed his father, who immigrated from the Soviet Union when Vindman was a small child. Dad, I'm sitting here today in the U.S. Capitol talking to our elected professionals talking to our elected professionals is proof that you made the right decision 40 years ago to leave the Soviet Union and come here to the United States of America in search of a better life for our family. Do not worry. I will be fine for telling the truth. Finally, on November 19th, Gordon Sondland, the ambassador to the European Union and a figure who had loomed large throughout all of the public hearings, testified publicly. As the House Intelligence Committee and the American public learned more about the Trump administration's shadow foreign policy and pressure campaign against Ukraine, Sondland emerged as a key figure, working closely with Rudolf Giuliani and President Trump to get Ukraine to open investigations into the Bidens. Sondland's testimony may have been the most important in the entire inquiry, because in his opening statement, he explicitly confirmed the existence of an all-important quid pro quo. I know that members of this committee frequently frame these complicated issues in the form of a simple question. Was there a quid pro quo? As I testified previously, with regard to the requested White House call and the White House meeting, the answer is yes. On December 13th, the House Judiciary Committee passed two articles of impeachment against President Trump, one for abuse of power and one for obstruction of Congress. The articles are likely to be approved by the full House of Representatives on Wednesday, and President Trump will become the third president in U.S. history to be impeached. Afterwards, the impeachment process will move to the U.S. Senate. I'm Elijah Bacall, reporting for The Transcript.